Kalpona, your personal story is actually uh, t- tragic and represents sort of so what so many people in Bangladesh have to go through, unfortunately, and and, and that is that, that you did work in a sweatshop yourself from the ages of 12 to 20, making $6 a month for 450 hours of work. What was that like, and how did you emerge from there to become the executive director of this major organization on behalf of Bangladesh workers? Yeah, I think this was a top nurse. I mean, definitely, it wasn't my choice to go to the factory in that age of 12. Uh, I had to go to the factory to support my family because my dad, my father, he got ill. He was the primary earner in the family. And then uh, there wasn't anyone who can support us. So first, my me and my mom, we started working in the factory. And my mom was able to work like six months. And she had to quit because she has infant. My younger sister was just two, year, two, uh, two months old. And after her, me and my ten and a half years old brother, we was working in the factory and supporting our family. Uh, and as you said, yes, my, well, I was earning just six dollars for per month, being working more than over over four hundred and fifty hours. So you know, last uh, sorry, first few few years, I really hadn't had any idea about law and rights. Um, that there is a law uh, to protect our rights, to pay us better, um, and treat us better, but. I, I didn't know anything. So, you know, as I don't know anything, I I had to even work 23 days in a row in, in the sweatshop factory, being flabbing by the supervisors, yelled by them for any minor mistake. And that is not only with me, that was with my co-workers uh, who was working there. After a few years, we had a, a, a strike in our factory because our factory management wanted to give us less money for our overtime pay. And then we said it is not done. Though we don't know the law, but we went for a strike. And and we won our fight. But uh, the you know impact become with that our 20 of my co-workers uh, got fired because they, they were the among strikers. And these folks was, uh, you know, looking for an organization where they can get help. And they found Seoul Dairy Center, which is international wing for AFL-CIO. So this Seoul Dairy Center was helping workers to um, uh, know the law and rights. I mean, they, they were giving legal training. And in the same time, they were helping a group of female workers to uh, from the independent government union. So... Uh, my colleagues, they came in here and they came to, uh, came to know they can get help and sue the factory owner and they sued and they came back to us and said, guys, you should come in, a, in this center because you, uh, there is something that you should know. Then I came with them and I spent four hours in that center and that four hours really changed my life. This four hours, I got a training on level law. I came to know what is law. I know I came to know there is a law which can protect our rights. I came to know that I can I can join union and union can protect my rights. And literally, it was like second born for me. So then I started organizing union in my production floor, and it took like a year or so to have membership. And it uh, you know I can I can say proudly that out of 1,500 workers, almost 99% was union member. And I, we submitted the application to the government uh, office for registration, which is law. We have to do that. But the government, uh, uh, they reject our application. And in the same time, I kicked uh, out from the factory. I just fired. Um, and then I sued the factory owner and the government as well. Um, in the labor court, and and then I sued both of them in ILO Geneva for unfair labor practice uh, because they violated uh, ILO provision 87 and 98. So then uh, they made my life miserable. I was uh, working in other factories, but those factories 
keep keep fighting me because I have my I have been blacklisted by the factory owner, and then they blacklisted me, you know, throughout the industry. So I didn't get job anywhere. And then I joined with the union called Big Off, uh, Bangladesh Independent Garment Workers Union. So I joined with them as a union organizer, and I was played in their board as well, working president and then education secretary. So that is started my journey as a union organizer, and lately I joined with uh, Bangladesh Center for Workers Solidarity in 2000. I'm one of the co-founders of this organization, too. Since then, I'm working in here. So I think that is the, you know, Marsha, I should say that how I came to, uh, from a sewing machine helper to executive director of an organization. It's, it's an amazing and inspiring story. And... Uh, one that I imagine is not easy to talk about, but at the end of the day, you've taken your story, you've taken your struggle and your triumph over these forces for your rights as a human being, and you haven't turned your back and just said, okay, I'm free, great. You're now working to bring those liberties, those freedoms, those rights to other people. And uh, for that, I think we, we all honor you and, and, and thank you. And I encourage everyone to, to follow your work, to go to, to, go to gapdeadtraps.com, to sign on to the Day of Action on June 29th, all across the world. And to get more involved, look up Solidarity Center, look up United Students Against Sweatshops, uh, look up Kalpona Agda, the Bangladesh Center for Workers Solidarity. Kalpona, thank you so much for joining us today on Take Action News. This has uh, truly been an honor and a privilege. Yeah, thanks so much for having me in here. You know, our fight do not end in here. We need to keep fighting to have a safe working place. So please, everyone, join in the 29th Global Campaign against Gap and Walmart. Thank you. You, you heard it from, from someone who can't tell it any better, folks. Join this campaign to hold Gap and Walmart accountable for the human rights of people like Kalpona. Take Action News continues. We're going to return a little bit to the United States and, and, and Congress and what's going on there, the farm bill that failed. We're talking with Charlie Mitchell. Take Action News continues after this.